right, so let's continue our grass blade texture here. And what I want to do is I want to turn this into an actual pixel texture. All right, currently it's all just 3D geometry. All right, and so what I'm going to do is use a technique that uh, I watched on Lester Banks's website from Fabrizio. And it basically goes through how to make your own texture type of generator using cops and stuff like that. So I highly recommend you check that out. All right, cool. And so uh, we're going to set up that same thing. Okay. And so what I want to do is turn off our grid there. Uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, basically create a volume. All right. And this volume is going to represent what they call planes inside of Houdini. Uh, at the end, right? It is a volume basically at the start here. All right. And so uh, this first volume, I want to basically store color information. All right. So that's going to be our color and this is going to be a type of vector. And I want it to be a two dimensional vector. All right. And you'll notice if I were to actually turn this on. All right. And uh, let's actually template our grid. I need this volume to be the same size as our grid. So I need to go here and uh, get the size of the grid. So we can do it in a couple ways. You can use BB box or you can just uh, sample the size of the grid itself, which makes it easy. So we can say grid one and we can get the size X like so. There we go. All right. And we also need that for our Y direction as well. And that didn't seem to do anything for me. Let's get rid of that there. Interesting. I didn't want to update. Let's do by size. And that's odd. That should totally have worked. It's just not updating for me for some weird reason. But what I'm going to do is go through and set up all these properties here. And so I want the size to be um, 1024 by 1024. And that is our division sizes there. There we go. All right, so this is what I wanted to do. I want to do non-square, 1024 um, for our texture as well. So X and Y, so 1024 by 1024, just like that. Okay, so uh, with that, I'm going to just turn off the Z axis there. And all right, and so it doesn't seem to be wanting to update for me, which is unfortunate, but uh, that those are the, the setups. So you can see now if I were to actually uh, give this some value, um, it will actually show up as white. So currently I just have the color set to 000. All right. So what I want to do is also give this a name. So this is going to be called C for color. And what I want to do is, oh, there we go. See, it's having a problem updating. I don't understand. Um, okay. Uh, the next one I want to do is alpha. So we want an alpha for this as well. And we basically want those same setup, but the alpha is going to be a scalar because it just goes from zero to one, right? So I'm going to name this A. And then what I want is a gradient value. We can use this gradient value for some texture work. All right, I'm just going to call that G for now. And what we can do now with all those different volumes or planes is just merge them all together. Okay, very cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically raycast into the geometry. Now to do this, uh, what I need to do is I need to drop down an object merge node and we're going to say we're going to get our blades. All right. And let's go and do that. So I don't need to transform it. It will just be uh, from our blade. So we should set up a null node for ourselves. Just make it easy. Like so. We'll say out uh, blade sheet. Like so. So now in our object merge node over here, what we can do is go look for out blade sheet. And now we've got our blade sheet right there. Okay. So to do the ray casting, it's actually quite simple, but it does require that we use some VEX. So I'm going to feed the, the uh, volume into, and we need a volume wrangle for this. So volume wrangle. So I'm going to feed that into the volume wrangle, the, all the volumes here, and then I'm going to get the geometry and put that into the second input or input of an ID of one. Okay. And so what we want to do is I want to do a ray cast. And to do this, I first want to declare a couple of variables. So I'm going to declare a vector 
and we're going to call this out hit and then I'm going to make another vector called out UVW. And I want out UVW, like so. All right. And uh, what I want to do is I want to basically say uh, int hit is equal to intersect, like so. And we want to intersect with the geometry coming in from the first or the second input, which is ID 1, okay? And we want to take the at current position that inside of our volume, all right, because we're basically going to go through each, you know, pixel, if you will, and do a scan. We're going to raycast into this. So that's that at P value. And we want to do a raycast direction. So in this case, I'm going to do the Z axis. So I'm going to do a negative 100, okay? And we want to output that into the out hit, so that's the current position. And then we want to uh, store the UV hit as well. All right, so with that, that will output for us negative one or the primitive that we hit. Remember, just the primitive, not any point or anything like that. We have to do some other work to actually get the hit point, okay? And so um, the next step in all this is to check to say if hit is greater than or equal to one or zero, excuse me, because if it's negative one, we didn't hit anything. If this function right here returns a negative one, that means we didn't hit anything. And so uh, nothing's going to run. Okay. Um, but now we can say if we did get a value, so if it's equal to zero or greater, because remember, if it does hit something, this is going to be the current primitive number that we hit. All right. Then what we want to do is we want to say at C. All right. Because remember, C is this volume up here. And that's how we access the volume. We say at C is equal to point and then provide it some sort of point. But we, we need to actually find the prim point or the point on the primitive, okay? So uh, this is going to be called our hit point. So hit point, so let's just keep it short. We'll call this a prim point, like so. And if you ever wanna find the help for these things, just put your cursor you know, right in the middle of the name, the function name and hit F1 on the keyboard. And this will actually launch the help for that specific function that you're working with which is very convenient. You're not having to like search through the API or anything like that. All right, and so once this is loaded, we'll go through and talk about the different features. So the prim point is going to give us a point uh, from the hit primitive, okay? So we want to find a prim point from geometry one, because that's what we're sampling, and we're going to get the prim num, which is stored in this hit value, okay? So we're going to say hit, and the vertex will just be zero, like so. Cool. So with that information, we now have a hit point, okay? So I can say point, we want to get from one, we want to get the point from the one, and we want to get the color value coming in, all right? And we want to use the hit point, like so. And we need to make sure we name that correctly. There we go. All right, so we don't actually see anything, oddly enough. And the first couple things that we actually need to do is we need to actually go up back to our grass blade over here and into our color node, like so, because currently we're putting the color onto the point. We actually need to put it onto the uh, primitive itself, uh, which means we actually need to promote the uh, gradient value. Or we could always go and, let's go back into our grass texture sheet. All right, so when we get the grass blade, we can also just do an attribute promote, so we can say attribute promote like so cool and we want to get everything so we're going to promote the point oh i actually got the attribute randomized i didn't want to do that so attribute promote there we go so the original class is point which is right we want to send it to the primitives and the original name is color so now we've got that on the actual primitive cool very cool. Okay, so that is going to work out nicely for us. All right, so now if we go here, uh, you can see that we still don't see any particular value. All right, so one thing we could do is we could say at a is equal to uh, one, let's say. There we go. So now we're starting to get the alpha where it hits. Cool. And then we could say at uh, g is equal to point. Uh, one, and we're looking for that gradient attribute that we put on there. We'll feed in the hit point to sample from. 
All right. So with that, we should be good to go. You know, we actually do want to put the color back on. We don't want that. So let's just toggle this off. And you can see that this thing is trying to display the alpha value. And it's just displaying white. But if we put down a volume visualization node, it'll allow us to go and um, look at these particular variables. All right, so we have C dot star, which stands for all the color information. Now, we're not really getting anything. And uh, one of the reasons why is because the, the mesh itself is literally sitting right inside these planes or the, the volume planes. And so we need to just move it back a little bit in Z. All right, so it can actually fire the raycast. We're just barely getting it. And so I just want to set this back like negative one, like so. Now that's getting more of the actual shape that we want. All right. And let's take a look at the color. And the color, for some reason, is still not uh, hitting appropriately. And that is odd because this should be working. So maybe if we declare it properly. There we go. So it just wanted to know the, the value. So we should just put the actual value declarations in front. So V stands for vector. F stands for float. And V stands for, and this is not actually a vector. This is an F. There we go. Let's just make sure our gradient was set to scalar. Cool. All right. So now if I were to go and look at my uh, gradient value, you can see we're getting the gradient value as well. But you notice that it's actually pretty stepped. And that's just because of the resolution of our grass blade. So let's change that. Let me set this back to our C dot star, which stands for all the channels. So let's turn this off too. We don't need that. And uh, basically what we want to do is we want to subdivide it. So, but I also want to keep the shape. I don't want to, you know, shrink the shape anymore. So I'm going to create some creases uh, for this. All right. So what we need to do is find all the borders. And so uh, let's drop down a group node and we'll call this borders. There we go. Like so. And I want to get all the unshared edges. And we'll set this to edges, or not vertices. We'll set it to edges. There we go. So we get the borders. And we'll set that in. We'll send that into our crease because the subdivide node now will subdivide using those. There we go. And we'll feed the creases into the second input. There we go. So now we've got um, a way to make more resolution on each one of these blades of grasses. Okay, cool. So let's go and feed that in instead. Move this up just to organize it. And let's go take a look at our volume visualization now. There we go. So now we have a smoother gradient for our particular grass blades. Super cool. Okay, so with that, um, let's just do another null and let's call this out recast like so. There we go. So now we have all of our planes. So in the next lecture, what we're going to do is talk about how we get this into an actual like Targa format or PNG. All right. So we can actually use it in our game. All right. So thanks so much.